Okay, so we're going to make a matching towel for this vintage pot holder dress. And I'm putting a link if you wanted to make this pot holder dress. Um, you can use um, the video tutorial that I have to make this. And in the video tutorial, I used an H size crochet hook. But for this one, I went ahead and used a J crochet hook or 6 millimeter. But it's the same pattern, and you would just use the larger hook if you would want a slightly bigger not much bigger, they're about the same size. But um, for this project, I used 100% cotton and I used a purple and a white yarn. So this was the yarn that I used, Peaches and Cream, and it's 100% cotton. And the colors are Fresh Lilac and White. And I'm also using this little decorative flower for the, pot, for the um, towel dress, it'll go right onto the dress. And you can get these at the craft store. They sell bags of these. And I'm using a little purple color, the same color as the dress. And the ribbon that I chose has this beautiful flower. And it's you can't really tell on video, but it has a lilac color, a little purplish color at the top, and a light green at the bottom, and then deeper purple color flowers across the center and this is Ofre ribbon and the size is um, 5 8 inch by and this one's by 12 feet Let's see if I can bring that in and you're also just going to need a sewing needle regular sewing needle and some white thread and I'm using this purple button it looks blue on video but it's actually a purple button and it's from Favorite Findings and you're just going to need your tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. Okay the first thing we're going to do is our embroidery stitch and so you're going to need your tapestry needle and I'm using the white 100% cotton yarn to start with. So you're going to take your towel and you're going to find out which side that you want for the front. Mine is going to be the same on both sides. And then you're just going to fold the towel in half. And at the bottom, you'll want to overlap the front just a little bit more than the back. And then you're going to see if you have a line to work with. If not, then you can iron a line so you can see it better. But I can see my line pretty good, so I'm not going to iron it. And then you're just going to fold in to just kind of see how your towel is going to lie or get an idea. And then you're going to line these back. The back part of your towel is not going to overlap but they are going to be touching. So the back part's going to touch like that. And then you just want to kind of get an idea how your towel is going to line up. And then with the dress, you're going to make it match up. So for ours, we're probably going to do two rows. We're going to make it the same way up to probably the second row or maybe even the third row so you can see more of the dress for the top of the um, towel. So once you're happy with how you think the towel is going to be, then you're just going to open it up because you're going to do your embroidery stitch across the line all the way across the towel. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is take your tapestry needle with the thread and you're going to go in from the bottom of the towel up through the top, right on the edge. And just bring your yarn through and just leave enough on the back side that you can tie a good knot on the back end. And then you're going to take your yarn and you're going to put it at an angle off to the left. And then you're going to take your tapestry needle 
And you're going to go in really close to where you came out from the other side. I'm going to go back in through the towel and you're going to take about a centimeter bite with the tapestry needle. Right through the center of the loop and then you form an embroidery stitch. And then when you go back down into the towel, you want to make sure that you don't go inside the loop. You want to be outside the loop. You want your yarn to go off to the left again. Take your tapestry needle and go down back into the towel. You're following your line and you're going to take about another centimeter to centimeter and a half of the towel with the tapestry needle. And you can see how your embroidery stitch falls nicely. So you're going to do this embroidery stitch all the way across the towel following your line. And I'm just going to do a few more so you can see how I do it. Make sure that your stitch lies down nicely. And I'm going to do one more and then I'll let you finish. Okay, so go ahead and finish doing your embroidery stitch all the way across the towel to the end. And then come back and I'll show you how to tie the knot. Okay, so I finished my embroidery stitch all along the center of the towel. So now on the back I'm just going to weave my tapestry needle in and out through the back of the stitches. You just want to bring the yarn in before I tie the knot so you won't be able to see the end. And then once you have it in a little bit more, <clears throat> then you can go ahead and tie your knot. And then once you have a good knot, then you can just leave a little bit of a tail. That way it's less likely for it to come out and nobody will see it on the inside. <clears throat> and then you're going to go and do the same thing on the other side. Then once your knots are tied, you're going to fold your towel back along the embroidery stitch and fold it the way that you want your towel to look on the front. And you want to line up your embroidery stitches so that the ends are touching the ends of the towel. And then you're going to take your white yarn and your crochet hook, J hook. Okay, and then you're going to take your crochet hook and then go through the first stitch on the front and then also go through the back stitch on the back of the towel. And then you're going to grab your yarn and then you're going to hook it and bring it through both the front and the back, both stitches. And leave enough yarn, loose yarn end, to tie a knot. And then you're going to do it one chain going to yarn over and go through the loop for a single chain and then you're going to turn the work and then just tie a knot. And 
And I usually tie it about three times. Make sure you have a good knot. And then you're going to do a single crochet into the same stitch. So you're going to go into the same stitch, the front and the back. And you can bury your loose yarn end as you work. Then bring up a loop. Then you have two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and go through both loops on your hook for a single crochet. And then you're going to go into the next stitch over in the front and in the back. You're going to bring up a loop. You have two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. And then you're going to go into the next stitch. And at the same time, I'm burying my loose yarn end. And then I'm grabbing that back towel embroidery stitch. Make sure you get both loops. And then yarn over and bring up a loop. Two loops on the hook. Yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. And you're just going to do that all the way across. Going in the front loop and into the back loop, making sure you grab both loops on the back part of the towel as well. Then yarn over and bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. And then just go ahead and do that all the way across the towel and then come back and I'll show you how to move up to the next row. Now here I had one more stitch on that back row so it's okay if you had to do another stitch in the same stitch in the front. I'm just doing another single crochet in the same stitch in the front and then grabbing that back loop. And then if you in the middle, if you're not able to grab the back of the towel, just do a single crochet in that single stitch in the front. And then in the next stitch over, you can grab the back embroidery stitch to do a single crochet. And then it looks like I have to do another single crochet in the same stitch in the front to grab the next stitch in the back. for another single crochet. Okay, so this is how my work is looking and I'm really happy with how the front looks. And you can see how my stitch looks across the top and then I also have a nice stitch across the back and it lines up nicely with the back of the towel. And now that I'm on the end, I want to do one more single crochet in that last stitch just to make it reach all the way to the end of the towel. And then I'm going to do a single, I'm going to do a chain one, yarn over and go through the loop for a chain one. And then I'm going to turn the work over. And here you can see how the stitch kind of loops up. Here, you're not going to go into that stitch, you're going to work into the next stitch over. And we're going to do single crochets all the way back. So I'm just going to do a couple with you. I'm going to go into the next stitch. I'm going to yarn over, bring up a stitch. You have two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. Next stitch, single crochet. And then go ahead and do a single crochet in every stitch all the way across back to the end and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I'm back towards the end and I'm going to go ahead and do another single crochet in the end of that stitch there. And then I'm going to go ahead and chain one and then turn my work. And now I'm going to go ahead and join the purple yarn. 
So you're going to go ahead, find the end of your yarn, and then you're going to go into the next stitch and bring up a loop. You have two loops on your hook, and then you're going to get the purple yarn. And then you're going to hook it and bring it through both loops on the hook. And then you're going to chain one. So you're going to yarn over and go through the loop for one. And then you're going to turn the work over. And then you're going to cut the white yarn because we're done with that one. So that can go to the side. And then you're just going to tie a knot with your two loose yarn ends. And we're going to bury the loose yarn ends, both of them, as we work. So you're going to do a single crochet into the same stitch that you started with. So you're going to bring up a loop. You have two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and go through both loops for a single crochet. And you're going to go into the next stitch over. Bring up a loop. Yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. And then you're going to do a single crochet in every stitch all the way back to the other end. And then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I'm at the end. And I'm going to go ahead and chain one. And then turn the work. And then you're going to do a single crochet into every stitch all the way back to the other side. And then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I did a single crochet all the way to the end and this is how my work looks. And now I'm just going to go ahead and finish off. So I'm going to yarn over and then just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So now we have the bottom part completed and now we're going to work on the top part of the um, pot holder. Dress. Okay, so you're going to start with your white yarn and we're going to do a slip knot. And how I do that is I just fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop and then you take your crochet hook and just put it right through the loop and then hold it in place with your middle finger and thumb and then you're going to yarn over and pull the yarn through that loop for a slip knot and now you're going to chain 20 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So you have your chain of 20, and now we're going to do a slip stitch into that first stitch that we made. So go into the first stitch. Now you have both loops on your hook. You're going to take your yarn. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And now we're going to do treble crochets into the circle. And we're going to do 39 total treble crochets. So for the first treble crochet, you're just going to chain four. So you're going to chain one two, three, four. So that's your first treble crochet. So I'm going to do three treble crochets to show you and then you're going to finish and we're going to have a total of 39 treble crochets into the circle. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to yarn over twice. One, two. And then you're going to go into the circle 
and I kind of hold it like this to help stabilize it. I'm going to bring up a loop. Now I have four loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and go through two. Now I have three loops on the hook. I'm going to yarn over and go through two. And now I have two loops on the hook. I'm going to yarn over and go through two. So now I have two treble crochets completed. So I'm going to yarn over twice, go into the circle, bring up a loop. I have four loops on the hook. You can see how I'm holding my fingers. I'm going to yarn over and go through two. I'm going to yarn over and go through two. And then I'm going to yarn over and go through two. And now I've finished three. So I'm going to do one more slow one and then I'll do a fast one for you. So I'm going to yarn over twice, go into the circle, bring up a loop, have four loops on my hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two, and yarn over and go through two. So now I'm going to do one more with you and then you're going to finish doing all 39 total into the circle. And what's nice is you can move around all of the treble crochets. And so I just finished one, two, three, four, five. So go ahead and finish 39 treble crochets into the circle and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I finished 39 treble crochets into the circle and you can move your treble crochets around so that you fill out all of the gaps. And then once you have it the way you like, then you're just going to take and do a slip stitch and you're going to go into the top stitch of that first treble crochet and then you're going to yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch and now we're going to change colors so you're going to go into the next stitch and you're going to bring up a loop so now you have two loops on your hook you're going to take your purple color and then you're just going to take and hook it and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook and then you're going to take and do a chain one so you're going to yarn over and go through that loop for chain one and then turn your work over and you're going to take and cut the white yarn because we don't need it anymore and then you're going to take the two colors the loose ends of the yarn and tie a knot and then you're going to do a chain three for your first double crochet one two, three, then you're going to yarn over and you're going to do another double crochet into the same stitch and that's the only place other than at the halfway mark that you're going to do two double crochets in the same stitch. So now you're going to do one double crochet into every stitch all the way around to the halfway mark and then come back and then I'll show you what to do next. So I'm going to do it just a couple single double crochet crochets just to show you. So you just yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and yarn over and go through two. So you're going to do one double crochet into every stitch all the way to the halfway mark. So when you reach the halfway mark, come back and I'll show you what to do next. 
Okay, so now I'm at the halfway mark, and I'm going to do one more double crochet into the same stitch. So I'm going to yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. So those were the only two places that we did two double crochet in the same stitch in the beginning and then at the halfway mark. So now you're going to do double one double crochet stitch into every stitch back to where you started. So you're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two for double crochet. So go ahead and finish doing one double crochet into every stitch all the way back to the beginning and then come back. Okay, so now you're going to do a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first double crochet. You're going to yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And then you're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then you're going to do one double crochet into every stitch all the way around. You're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. So go ahead and do a double crochet into every stitch all the way around back to the beginning. Okay, so now that you're back to where you started, you can do a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first double crochet that you did. Just yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook. And now we're going to change colors. So you're going to go into the next loop, next stitch over and bring up a loop. You have two loops on your hook. And then you're going to take your white yarn And then you're just going to grab the yarn and bring it through both loops on your hook. And then you're going to chain one, yarn over and go through your loop for chain one. And then turn your work over. And now you're going to cut the purple yarn because we don't need that anymore for now. And then take the white yarn loose end and the purple yarn loose end and tie a knot. And now you're going to go ahead and do a chain three, one, two, three. And then you're going to do a double crochet in the same stitch. You're going to yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. And then you're going to chain one. And then you're going to do a double crochet in the same stitch, yarn over and go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. And then you're going to do one more double crochet into the same stitch, yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. So now you're going to skip two stitches and then work the same pattern into the next stitch. So you're going to yarn over, you're going to skip the next two stitches and work into the third stitch. Bring up a loop, you're going to work a double crochet, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. Now we're going to do another double crochet in the same stitch, yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, you have three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. And then you're going to chain one, and then you're going to do two more double crochet in the same stitch. Okay, so we're going to make a total of 14 of these around the circle. And each one, you're going to be skipping two spaces before you do this pattern, except for the very last one, you're going to only skip one space. So when you finish 13 of these, 
come back and then I'll show you how to do the 14th one. But I'm going to do one more with you. So I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to skip two. Go into that third spot. Bring up a loop. Three loops on the hook. Yarn over and go through two. And yarn over and go through two for one double crochet. Do another double crochet in the same stitch. Then you're going to chain one. And then do two more double crochet in the same stitch. Okay, so you're going to skip two stitches and then do the same pattern into that third stitch. And you're going to do a total of 13 of these and then come back and I'll show you how to do the 14. Okay, so this is how your work should look. And now you can see that there are three stitches left. So we're going to do our 14th one. So go ahead and yarn over and go and skip one stitch and then work into that second stitch. We're going to do a double crochet, do another double crochet, and then chain one, and then work two more double crochet in the same stitch, one, and two. And then you're going to do a slip stitch into the top of that first stitch on that first double crochet. You're going to yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And then you're going to go ahead and we're going to change colors. So you're going to bring the purple back. And we're just going to bring it through the one loop. And then we're going to chain one. And then we're going to turn the work over. And then cut the white yarn. And then just tie a knot. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and chain three, one, two, three, and now we're going to go ahead and line up the dress. So we're going to lay the two last, I'm going to call them shells, two shells, line them up with the back two shells. So you have a total of four, and that's going to be for the arm. And then you're going to take and do a double crochet into the opposite space. So you're going to count over one, two, three, four, and after that fourth shell, you're going to do a double crochet into the space between the fourth and fifth shell. So you're going to yarn over, and then you're going to go across into that space. You're going to bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook. Yarn over and go through two. And then yarn over and go through two. And then you see how you have the two double crochets. And then you have the four shells, one, two, three, four. So now you're going to go turn the work. And we're going to work into one of these shells right in the center, right below that chain one. So you're going to yarn over, you're going to go into that space, you're going to bring up a loop, we're going to do a double crochet, you're going to yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. And then we're going to do another double crochet in the same space. And then we're going to chain one, and then do two more double crochets in the same space. one and two. 
And now, in between these two shells, right in this space, we're going to do one double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, go into that space, and do one double crochet. And then we're going to do another shell right into the center in the chain one space. So yarn over, go into that space, bring up a loop, we'll do a double crochet, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two, another double crochet, chain one, two more double crochet, and that's how you're going to do that same pattern. You're going to do one double crochet in between the two shells and then you're going to do a shell in the chain one space and you're going to do that all the way around back to the beginning. Oh, actually, I'm just going to finish this with you because you aren't going to do that because we have to make the other armhole. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish this with you. So you're going to do a double crochet into the next space between the two shells and then you're going to do a shell in the chain one space so you have a total of three in the front and then you're going to do another double crochet into the space between the two shells and then you're going to count four one two three four shells and then you're going to do a double crochet between the fourth and the fifth shell so you're going to yarn over then go into that space bring up a loop three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, and then yarn over and go through two. And then you have the two double crochets and the four shells to form the armhole. And then you're going to do a shell in the chain one space, double crochet, shell, just like you did on this side, on the other side, and then come back and I'll show you how to join. Okay, so you should have finished the three across the other side, and now we're going to do a slip stitch to that first double crochet that we made. So you're going to go to the top of that first double crochet and go into the stitch. And you're going to yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch, and then we're going to go ahead and finish off. So you're going to yarn over and bring the yarn through and bring enough yarn to sew onto your project. Okay, so now you're going to take your tapestry needle and put it on that long yarn end that you had for sewing and you're going to take your towel and you're just going to place the upper part of the dress over the purple portion on the towel and then you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to sew the two pieces together with your tapestry needle and when you're done come back and we'll see what okay, to and then do you next. want to take and just bury any loose yarn ends just take your tapestry needle and just weave it through the work go ahead and bury any loose yarn ends that you have and then come back and I'll show you what to do next okay so now you want to get your white yarn and your tapestry needle and we're just going to line up the top together And then you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to come in from the back towards the front with your tapestry needle and just go right below the rim 
and leave enough yarn in the back to bury into your work. And then you're just going to weave back and forth with your tapestry needle and sew this opening shut. So I go ahead and just tie a knot, that initial knot. And then just line up the top again. And then you're just going to weave your tapestry needle back and forth to close that opening and then come back. Okay, so this is how my work looks so far. And on the back, you see how I buried all of my loose yarn ends on the inside. And now I have a little bit excess of the yarn left, so I'm going to use this to crochet my little loop at the top but if you don't have enough then you can just use your regular yarn so I'm going to go right in the center with my crochet hook right below the rim and then I'm going to grab my excess yarn with my hook and bring it through to form a loop and then I'm going to take and do a chain one and then I'm going to tie a knot then I'm going to go ahead and chain five one two three, four, five, and then I'm going to go back in through the same opening that I went through before, and then I'm going to bring up a loop, and then I'm going to take that loop that I brought up and bring it right through the other loop on the hook, and then I'm going to finish off. And then I have my loop at the top. So now I'm going to take my yarn end, take my tapestry needle, and then take and bring the tapestry needle through to the back. And then I'm going to tie a knot on the back and then bury my loose yarn ends. And then come back and I'll show you how to place the ribbon and sew on the little bow. Okay, so now I'm taking my ribbon, the Ofray ribbon, and I'm just measuring how much I need to tie the bow. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut the amount of ribbon that I want. Okay, and now I'm going to weave the ribbon through behind the double crochets and then in front of the shells. And I'm going to do that all the way around the top and then come back and we'll tie the bow. Okay, so you can see how I placed the ribbon and I went all the way around the back and then I came out on the side of the dress and now you can just tie your bow onto the side of the dress or you can tie the bow Okay, and this center. is how my bow looks. I like it off to the side like that. I think that's cute. And then I'm going to take my little craft bow with a little pearl in the center and I'm going to place it right in the middle of the dress and then I'm just going to take a sewing needle with some white thread and then you're just going to sew you can take through the arm make sure you just sew right through the front only 
and then you just take the sewing needle and then you just go right along the inner around the pearl and then just sew it in place and I'm just sewing in and out underneath the pearl and then just going in and out through the top and grabbing some yarn underneath and coming up around the pearl with my sewing needle. And then I'll tie a knot and bury the yarn, the little um, thread. Okay, pieces. and then I have the bow and the little flower sewn on. So now on the back, we're just going to do the strip and the button for putting on if you want to hang it on to your stove handle. Okay, what's nice about this button is I have a tapestry needle that will fit right through the buttonhole. If you don't have a tapestry needle that'll fit through, you can just use your regular sewing needle and thread. But if you do, then go ahead and get your white cotton yarn and then we're going to sew the button on and then just going to take your button you're going to go through the armhole again and then you're going to sew your button right above where the ribbon is and you're going to start from the inside and then just come up and leave enough on the back for tying a knot and then you're just going to go through the buttonhole a couple of times and remember your button is going to be on the back of the kitchen towel side and then once you have it a couple of times sewn on then just tie a knot and then cut the loose yarn in so it's hidden on the inside of the dress. Okay, so now you're going to get your 100% cotton white yarn and we're going to do a slip knot. So you're going to fold the yarn over on itself and then take your crochet hook and just go through the loop. Hold it with your middle finger and thumb. Then yarn over and bring the yarn through the loop for a slip knot. And then we're going to chain. So I'm going to show you how to chain just yarn over and pull through the loop for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we're going to actually chain 20, so I'm going to do 10 more. So I have a chain of 20 and then you're going to hold that last stitch that you did with your middle finger and thumb. You're going to chain one for the next row and then we're going to do a single crochet into the second chain from the hook which is the stitch that you're holding. You're going to go into that stitch, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both loops for a single crochet. And we're going to do one single crochet into every stitch all the way back to the beginning and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay so this is how your work looks so now we're going to chain one and then you're going to turn your work and you're not going to go into this first stitch where it slopes up you're going to go into the next stitch over and do a single crochet So you're going to go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. And you're going to do a single crochet all the way back to the end and then you're going to do one more row. So go ahead and do two more rows of one single crochet into every stitch and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so this is how your work looks and so now we're going to make the button loop at the end. 
So just turn your work so that the side is facing up like this, and then you're going to chain one, two, three, four, five, six, chain six, and then you're going to do a slip stitch into the opposite end. Go ahead and bring up the yarn and bring it through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. And then we're going to go ahead and finish off. So you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull enough yarn through to sew the strip onto the project. Okay, so you can tie a knot with a little loose yarn in that you have and then you can go ahead and just bury it into your work with your tapestry needle and then just cut it okay so now you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to take and weave the yarn end down and then go ahead and you're going to place the strip onto the back right above the button and then you can kind of lift up the button and then move the strip down as close to the button as you can because you're going to bring down the sewing yarn side down just keep weaving your tapestry needle until you get the thread down because you're going to sew only this top part just below the rim of the upper part of the um, dress. So once you get the sewing yarn side down, you only want to sew to the back side of the dress. You don't want to go to the front as you're sewing. So you're just going to line it up as best as you can on the back and then you're just going to sew it. You can go in and out making sure you grab the back of the dress and just sew the strip onto the dress, the back of the dress and just sew it in place because this top strip is going to come down and form a latch. So just make sure you sew this part down well to the back of the dress and then tie a knot and then come back and we'll see the finished product. Okay, so we have the finished product and there's two ways you can either hang it like this or on the back you have a little latch for hanging onto the stove handle so you can see how it has a little loop and a little button for opening and you're all done Okay, so for the little, it's not a pot holder, but the little dress that's going to be used as a magnet, a fridge magnet, um, you're going to need, this is actually made the same way as the big one, except that I used a much smaller hook. This is a size C crochet hook, and the bigger pot holder dress I used my J hook, six millimeter crochet hook. So you would use the same pattern that I have for my vintage pot holder dress, except you're going to be changing the crochet hook. So if you want this size pot holder dress, then you would use a J hook or six millimeter crochet hook. And then if you want this size, 
dress, you would use the C size crochet hook. And also, I stopped after you have the first level, first row, and then you have the second row, and then you have the third row, which I did in white, and then you have the fourth row that I did in purple, and that's when I stopped. So that's the difference with this one. And if you're going to make this one, you're also going to need a magnet. And I got this at the local craft store, and it's just a, a magnet button, and I'm just going to be using this side of the magnet. And also the ribbon, I'm using the Celebrate It 360 ribbon, and it's a 3 8 inch. And it has a nice glittery purple to it. And I'm also going to use this button. And this is just a little dark purple butterfly button. And I'm going to put that right in the center of the dress. So for the little hook or loop at the top, I actually did a chain of eight with the crochet hook, the C crochet hook. And now I'm just going to take my sewing needle and thread and I'm just going to sew on my little butterfly button. So whatever button that you're using or if you're just using a little bow like the one used on our um, let me bring that in here with the dress topper for the kitchen towel you can use that kind of design whatever design that you want but I'm going to be using my little butterfly so I'm going to go ahead and sew that on and then come back and show you how to tie the ribbon on. Okay so I have my button sewed on to the front and before I show you how to do the ribbon I'm just going to put the magnet on so this is the magnet magnetized side and I'm just going to place it right in the center of the back. And then you just take on the inside, you can see where I put all my loose yarn ends. <laughs> and then you just kind of fold the sides down of the magnet on the inside. Okay, so you do have to push down a little bit hard on the inside to get the magnet to lay down but it does push down and then holds on either side of the yarn and you can see how it stays pretty good on there you wouldn't want a child playing with it because it doesn't have a safety latch on it but for just hanging on the fridge um, that would work fine just hang it high enough where little kids can't get a hold of it and now I'm just going to show you how to put the ribbon on So we're going to take the ribbon and we're just going to take it and weave it through the white portion right beneath the curve here and then just bring it in and out. And then you're going to do that all the way around. Just weave it in and out. right along this side around the back and towards the side again we're going to tie the bow right on the side okay and then you can see how the bow is tied on the side it's a shimmery bow and the cute little butterfly button and then you have the magnet on the back and then you are all done you have all your pieces you have your beautiful towel topper and you also have your little fridge magnet and you have your hot pad okay so the last thing I wanted to show you was um, how much yarn that I had left over so I was able to make all three of these for um, with just two of these yarns each one was about two and a half ounces 
or 70.9 grams. And again, it was the peaches and cream brand.